defied the Taliban. The Taliban threatened them. The Afghan security forces protected the people, but it got them out to vote. It, it let them make a choice for their future and give them optimism for the way ahead for their country. The assumption is that there will be a bilateral security agreement signed. So what does that mean to the U.S. and, and to NATO? It'll mean a long-term commitment and partnership. The BSA will be for the bilateral peace between the United States and Afghanistan. It will allow an enduring commitment from a core platform perspective in the Northwest, South and East and here in Kabul to provide continued train advised assist, security force assistance, functionally based uh, for a couple years out. And the SOFA will allow our coalition partners to provide the same. We're at the start of the fighting season, a fighting season the Taliban has made clear is going to be a tough one. What will be the role of U.S. forces in this fighting season? The coalition will continue to provide support to the ANSF for the fighting season. That mostly comes in the support of enablers. It provides intel-based operations. It provides fires. That's both from the ground, air weapon teams, close air support. It provides quick reaction forces. It provides logistical support. And it provides CASAVAC, medevac, ground air based on what the amount of casualties are on the ground. How would you characterize the fighting capabilities of the ANSF? They're very capable. At the tactical level, they're doing very well. So brigade, CANDAC, battalion equivalent and below, very well. The issue for Corps commanders is the challenges of the higher war fight. How do you integrate air with ground operations, indirect fire in support of operations, intelligence-based operations? So they, they vary by Corps and, and they vary by which component of the ANSF you're talking about. Uh, from the Army, but to the Border Police, to the Civil Obedience Police, uh, to the Uniform Police. They all vary in their capabilities on leadership, training, manning, equipping. Uh, but by and large, the Corps commanders have a much bigger role in integrating and command and controlling their battle space. And, that, and that's a maturation, developmental experience piece that we have to keep working with them on. So how does the train, advise, and assist mission factor into this? The advisors are still at a lot of brigade locations, but they're evolving more to the core platform. It requires now a more experienced advisor. It requires an advisor who has the, the schooling, the background, education, but most importantly, the experience at the appropriate level to coach, counsel, mentor, train, advise, assist, uh, their counterparts to be able to do combined arms operations, logistics, intelligence, force protection, fires, and those types of things. Uh, what, are you, what are you seeing with uh, anti-Taliban movements? In watching you as you interact with core commanders, it's almost like you have a balancing act going. Your big brother, your diplomat, your soldier, your commander, your encourager. I think all of the above. I think my job is to be a good partner with them. It's to be a good friend with them. It goes back to what you just asked me. I am a corps commander. I have been a division commander. So when it comes to talking with them, helping them understand the environment they're dealing with. Keep, keep using every asset they give you from Kabul. From it doesn't take a lot of hard pushing or tough love. Sometimes we got to make sure they realize they got to do things on their own and we don't provide something. But by and large, it's helping them understand more of the picture, what's going on in their environment, what those challenges are, and helping them move forward in many, in many of those categories we just talked about. What represents your greatest challenge at this moment in time? It'll be sustaining the fight while conducting retrograde and redeployment operations. So clo closing the footprint, drawing down the footprint while we're in contact with the enemy in a fighting season will be a tough situation. So how does that affect what you're doing? We're going to reallocate assets. We're going to work with our partners. We're going to depend on our partners. They're going to have to help us with a, an outer security ring, so to speak. Uh, but we will pr prioritize our effort and based on certain parts of the country and based on risk assessments, we'll evaluate what we can do when with what. We've heard that the Afghan security forces do take the lead in security. They're good fighters. Can they keep it up in the long run? They're up to it. They've demonstrated that between protecting the Loya Jirga, between getting through the Naru's, the presidential palace, big event they had, through the Ghazni Islamic Festival, to the opening of parliament, they, and the election. They have secured event after event after event after event. The issue is sustainability. They gotta be able to do that throughout this runoff and a fighting season that goes all the way out to the fall. So that is their, that is their biggest challenge, sustained operations, but they're, they're very up to the day-to-day tactical fight that they're into. So what happens when we leave here and we leave all these bases? Do we turn them over? 
they'll take pieces, parts of all of them. We got to we got to keep working with them about which, where they want something and why. Uh, all of our bases provide a variety of things, from extended reach to do operations to log bases, uh, to presence, show of force, uh, a variety of reasons. So they got to figure out based on where they currently, and a lot of these bases they currently reside with us anyway. So which part of that footprint do they want and why? And we we will keep shaping forming, figuring out how to help them with that process, but taking on all that infrastructure in terms of resources, manpower, management is a tough task. There have been a lot of public reports about corruption. How does that impact what you're doing here? It impacts them because it affects their efficiencies. The good news is most leaders in their organizations don't tolerate it so much anymore and commanders want what they want. And when they know they're supposed to get a resupply of something, they want that to come to them as is and not deplanet, uh, depleted as it runs through all these different lines. Uh, how it affects us is we have to be the honest brokers with them and keep dealing with that and holding people accountable. But a professional, an institutionally trained professional army that's gonna be accountable to the world on things like corruption, like gender integration, like detainee abuse, all those things they have to Leaders have to be accountable and responsible for their actions. But people that tolerate that are not the kind of folks that need to be in this organization for their long-term viability. Do you consider Afghanistan to be a trusted ally at this point, someone who's got our back? I believe that totally. I think they're committed to that, and I think the average person you talk to, leader within the ANSF, would tell you the same. They are extremely appreciative of the coalition's commitment to A, take care of their country, and B, improve their security apparatus. So I think you've got a lot of folks that feel down the road that uh, because of the coalition is how they've survived and they are committed to showing that they are, that, that that investment has paid off in terms of what you see now and will pay off in the future uh, based on their willingness to support other countries. How does this assignment affect you, impact you personally? As another growing developmental opportunity uh, to learn. It's always an honor and pleasure to command troops. Lots of deployments. Not all my deployments have been as a commander. You, you relish the moment. I am always pleased by what our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and civilian workforce does here. It is always humbling. Uh, but the opportunity to work with our partners, to watch this country grow, develop, recover, mature is a thrill a day. And, and working and learning about this country and, and the people are another opportunity that I will Never forget. How strong is your reliance on your NATO partners? And how many do we have right now? Many people will say that the coalition makes life difficult. I would tell you just the opposite. Uh, it, it's very enjoyable to have 45 countries here and 52,000 plus, 22 of which are coalition. Uh, but the insights they bring, their experience, their background, but they're integrated into every level. Uh, from the ISAF headquarters to the IJC headquarters to the NTMA headquarters, every headquarters here they're a viable part of, and advisors, and assisters, and trainers, and supporters. And every single role and every contribution they make matters, and they are thrilled to have here. As we move closer to the end of Operation Enduring Freedom, what's the takeaway? The coalition works. Uh, and based on how you prioritize your effort, how you have a common vision, and how you work together to achieve results is what it's all about. But the coalition is a very viable, capable entity. It's been proven all these years. Uh, and the, the legacy will be, what does this ANSF look like for years to come based on everybody's efforts to develop them? And then what, how does this country evolve based on an international support over all these years?